Hello, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time you are connected. You're welcome to another powerful time in God's presence. Today, we're going to be talking about Jerusalem. What has Jerusalem got to do with the Antichrist? This is something that I know that a lot of people want to know. I know that there are certain things that you are not aware of that you must know. So uh, we're going to be talking about Jerusalem, the Antichrist. What has Israel got to do with Jerusalem? Who is the Antichrist? Where is it going to come from? These are things that you're going to know in this session. Hello, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. Give you honor. Give you adoration. Holy Spirit over to you. Less of me, more of you. Father, please teach us your word. Give us the grace to practicalize what we hear. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome to the presence of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And if you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Obviously, this is Foundation on a Solid Rock Ministry, where the Lord, the presence of God is here and is real. So, if you've been following the teachings, the previous teachings, you will know that the Holy Spirit has been teaching us about the end times, the Antichrist. So today, we're going to be looking at the connection between Jerusalem and the Antichrist. The connection between Jerusalem and the Antichrist part one. So we're going to be looking at like a brief introduction and then as time goes we're going to look at part two because it's not a teaching that you 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 rush. So Jerusalem and the Antichrist, what is the connection? It's very 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 important for us to know the connection of Israel and the Antichrist. Now let's go to the book of Jeremiah. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version today. Jeremiah chapter 25. We're going to be reading from verse 32 and 33 and please make sure that you share this video you like you subscribe and you share it on your page on every social media platform that you are you are connected with jeremiah chapter 25 verse 32 to 32 32 to 33 rather the bible says thus says the lord of hosts behold disaster shall go forth from nation to nation and a great wild wind shall be raised up from the farthest part of the nuts. Verse 33. And at that day the slain of the Lord shall be from one end of the earth, even to the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented or gathered or buried. They shall become refuse on the ground. Now we're going to look at what the Bible says in that particular Bible passage. It says there shall be what? An invasion. From nation to nation, there shall be an invasion. So there's going to be a northern invasion. That is the Russian and the Muslim word invading the mountains of Israel. Now let us look at one of the missions of the Antichrist when it comes on the surface of the earth. The Antichrist's first mission is to establish a peace treaty in the Middle East. Is that possible? Even in the present time we live now, in the year 2020, there is no... There, all the leaders try to make peace, but has it been successful? No. Jerusalem, Israel is surrounded by Palestine. It's surrounded by the Arab world. And what do they want to do? They want to take over. They want to take over. So we're going to be looking at, first of all, the mission of the Antichrist. The mission of the Antichrist is to establish a peace treaty in the Middle East. In the Middle East. And the peace treaty is going to be between Israel and the Arab. A time is coming that the Arab world will allow Israel to rebuild the temple. That's why they are still fighting till tomorrow. The temple is in the middle of Israel. And there's a, there's a, there's a problem that I can eat this. And you know, there's a lot of things that, how is it going to be rebuilt? How is it possible? Because that's a contention till tomorrow. All military, obviously, is going to be supernatural. Because the word of God, anything the Lord wants to do, he, he needs to work according to his word. So there's going to be an in supernatural intervention, but it's going to happen. Now let's quickly go to Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel, is it Ezekiel? Ezekiel. 
I'm always mixing it up. I thought I received deliverance from that. I'm always mixing Ezekiah and Ezekiel up. <laughs> Ezekiah is the king that cried to the Lord when Zenachari was disturbing him. Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel 38 verse 1 to 2. Please just come along with me. You would understand as the Holy Spirit teaches us. Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 1 to 2 says, Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, measured and two by and prophesy against him. And say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshosh and Tubal. We're going to stop there. Now, we all know that the northern of Jerusalem points to Moscow, which is Russia. So the book of, of Ezekiel is actually written in antiquity. So you might not, it's going to be talking about the way it is written. is about military hardware. Then, looking at that Bible passage we read now, Rosh is, is in the present location, Moscow, Russia. Pasia, Pasia is located, let's read further to verse uh, 4. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses and horsemen. All splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields. The, the, uh, the man of God is talking about military oppression. And all of them handling swords. Persia is in present day Iran. Persia is in present day Iran. Then Ethiopia. Ethiopian is 100% Muslim. Then we have Libya. We know Libya. And are with all, with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gorman and all his troop. Gorman is Eastern Europe. Yugoslavia, Albania, and Northern Greece. They are all together. Then he now says, Tokoma, and the house of Tokoma from the far north. Tokoma is Turkey, present day Turkey. So all of these Muslim nations will be brought together by a Russian military leadership. Where are they going to? The mountains of Israel. Now come along with me to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1a. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1a. The Bible says, It shall come to pass, when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all nations, where the Lord your God drives you, and you return to the Lord your God. We are going to focus on verse 1a. He says, You call them to mind among all nations. The nations call all the nations around Jerusalem. What do they want to do? They want to invade. But in this Bible passage, the Bible is saying they will return to the Lord. Remember that the Antichrist is going to reign after the body of Christ has been taken. After the body of Christ has been raptured. That is when the Antichrist will begin to reign. That is when the Antichrist will begin to do whatever it is that he wants to do. Everything is already in place, but the rapture has not taken place. Now, let's now go back to that Deuteronomy chapter 38. Verse 38 8 now says, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Makok, the prince of Rosh, Melshesh and Tuba, north of Jerusalem, point to Moscow and Russia. So the prophecy is against Moscow and Russia. But before it happens, there's going to be an alliance, there's going to be a cooperation of the Muslim world against Jerusalem against Israel. So the mountains of Israel is geographically in West Bank. It's in West Bank. Now let's now go to let's now go back to that Bible passage. So after the peace, the house of prepare yourself and be ready. All you verse 7 says, prepare yourself and be ready. You and all your companies that are gathered about you and be a guard for them. Now after the peace treaty, the Antichrist to come. Deceive them, do a lot of things, deceive all the, the, the Israelites, which they will believe. And once the Antichrist reigns, he's going to come for seven years. And then half of that three and a half years, he's going to allow Israel to rebuild the temple. And they'll be so excited. And once that is done, they're going to get rid of all their military oppression, all the military men, all of them will leave. 
They're going to get rid of all of them because they will think it is true. That is where the two witnesses, if you've not watched it, that's when the two witnesses came in the in, that came and was evangelizing and telling about the gospel that Jesus Christ is returned, that they shouldn't believe what the Antichrist is telling them. That's why the old nations hated the two witnesses because they're going to be saying that how can you say that we shouldn't believe this antichrist look at what is done there is peace everybody is enjoying themselves so how can you say it's false that's why they hated him and then suddenly so israel is going to be defenseless it, if israel is going to be very defenseless and they will be relaxed for that three and a half years then suddenly look at what will happen Let's now go to Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 10. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 10. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind and you will make an evil plan. You know, one of the one in spiritual warfare, one of the things that the enemy does is to disarm Christians. He disarms. That's why the Bible says that we should put on the full, not just simple one we should put on jesus christ the sword is jesus feet is when the bible says put on the whole armor of god because what the enemy tries to do is make sure that you are not fully kitted so once one is exposed he attacks so that's why if you're a child of god and you're not fully kitted you are prone to the attack of the enemy is a warfare when a spiritual warfare that's why the Bible says that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. So you don't go and face somebody and say, I'm angry with you. No, there's a spirit behind. So looking at this, the Israelite, the, the Antichrist will know that for sure the Israelites were no longer with any military weapons. So they already relaxed. They already trusted the Antichrist. And indeed, he will stick to what he said. Indeed, there will be no war anymore. Indeed, all the Arab nations will come together and say, okay, Israel, no problem. For three and a half years. Verse 11 says, you will say, I will go up against a land of unwalled villages. Israel would be so relaxed. They will be so relaxed. And all of them, I, I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely. All of them dwelling without walls and having never bars nor gates what is the purpose to plunder and to take booty to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are against inhabited and against the people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the land so the antichrist is going to attack at a particular time that the israelites are not expecting they will be so relaxed no wonder the Lord said in the book of Matthew chapter 24. Let's quickly read Matthew chapter 24. This was when the Israelites, the disciples came to meet Jesus and said, What are the signs? Jesus Christ told them, Matthew chapter 24 verse 2. Let's quickly go to Matthew chapter 24 verse 2. Jesus Christ said, let's go to verse, um, yes, let's go to verse 2. It says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by prophet daniel the prophet standing in the holy place in the temple whoever reads it let him understand let those who are in judea flee to the mountains let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house and let him take who is in the field not go back to his clothes but woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days and pray that your flight may not be in winter or in sabbath for then there will be a great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time no no ever shall be and unless those days were shortened no flesh will be saved but the, for the elect's sake those days will be shortened because of the hundred and forty four thousand saints and for those that will believe them those days will be shortened but proud to that, the Lord is telling the Jews that the moment you hear, what is that abomination that the Antichrist will do? He might say that they should, they should sacrifice a pig, which is an abomination in the temple. Sacrifice things that is not heard of. When, you, when the Jews are left behind, once they hear that, the Lord said they should flee. They should leave Jerusalem. Now, let's now go back to that Bible passage. Now, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 2, 
Let's go to Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? As surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now we all know that in AD 70, Romans invaded and took the temple down. So what the Lord said came to pass. Now we're now going to go to the book of Daniel chapter 9. So today you can, we're actually going to be looking at the geographical location and the timing and the seasons before by God's grace part 2 will teach us further about what is going to happen with the Antichrist and the connection as we are reading right now that obviously when the body of Christ has been raptured and be taken out of the way to go and reign with Christ for a certain period of time, these are the activities that will be going on. And then Jerusalem is the focus. It is the focus of the Antichrist. Because when Jesus Christ returns, he's going to, be, he's going to land in Jerusalem for the second coming. When Jesus Christ comes back with, by God's grace, myself and yourself, when the body of Christ. So by God's grace, we're going to be looking at Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. So to understand what the Lord is teaching us now, the body of Christ will be raptured. After that... There will be a lot of activities on the surface of the earth. The angels are, even, are still coming to even do evangelism. Then the two witnesses are going to come. They are going to preach for a certain period, for three and a half years, telling the Israelites not to believe, but the Israelites will not answer them. Then the Lord, there will not be a peace treaty. Why Jerusalem? We are going to find out. So Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 says, Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 says, please go along with I'm going to be very slow in explaining this. This was when the Lord, when uh, the Lord decided to reveal to Daniel what was going to happen. Let's start from verse 20. Now, while I was speaking, praying and confessing my sin, and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly reached me about the time of the evening offering and he informed me and talked with me and said oh daniel i have now come forth to give you skill to understand at the beginning of your supplications the command went out and i've come to tell you for you are greatly beloved therefore consider the matter and understand the vision 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city remember that israel the israelites the jews are covenant people they are god covenant people they are people that the lord almighty they are god's people according to the word of god and the covenant that the lord had with abraham 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression to make an end of sins to make recon reconciliation for iniquity to bring in everlasting righteousness to seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the most high. Now, now therefore and understand that from going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The streets shall be built again on the wall, even in trouble sometimes. You're going to stop there. 70 weeks means 490 years. So it's going to take place from Old Testament to when the Lord Almighty returns, the second coming of Jesus Christ. So we're looking at it that between 400 and 600 BC, so we're looking at 454 BC, that was when the Lord told Nehemiah to go and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So till Jesus Christ, the crucifixion, the crucifixion. So when you add 483 plus 7, you have 1,000 years. I want you to know that 1,000 years. How many years is the millennia? 1,000 years. 1,000 years kingdom. Now, we're not going to go back to 490 years. So 490 years will be involved in fulfilling the Old Testament. In fulfilling the return of Jesus Christ. And there's going to be seven years of tribulation. And then the return of Jesus Christ. Where the new heavens and the new earth will come. Now let's now go to Daniel chapter 9. Verse 25, he says, No therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, until Jesus Christ returns for the second coming, what happens? There shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. 
seven weeks and 62 weeks. That is a total of 483 years from Nehemiah till crucifixion. But the prophecy is 490. So we have seven years unfulfilled. Please, I want you to note that. So 483 minus 490, my, you have seven years. So that's seven years. And you know the word of God is yea and amen. It has to be fulfilled. That is the seven years of the Antichrist. Now, let's now go to Daniel chapter 26. He now says, then after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the, and the sanctuary. After 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. That is the cross. Not by himself. The Lord didn't need to die for us, but willingly he died. Not by himself. Remember that the Romans were involved in the crucifixion. Please note that. Then the Bible now says, And the people of the prince who is to come, the Antichrist, shall destroy the city and sanctuary. So that is why Jesus Christ said that anyone that hears that the abomination has been committed after the three and a half years, flee because the city will be. And flee. He said, flee. Run. Because why? Everything will be destroyed. Now let's now go back. Let's look at the calculation again. We are going to conclude very soon. From Old Testament, 600 BC to Jesus, you have Babylonian Empire, you have the Medel, you have the Persian Empire, you have the Greek Empire, and you have the Roman Empire. Roman was part and parcel of the crucific crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 says, until the end of the world, desolations are determined. So when the Israelites, they need to flee to the mountains, what is going to happen after that? We are going to know in part 2. Verse 27 now says, Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abomination shall be the one who makes desolate. Even until the consumption, which consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. So he's going to do what? He's going to make a confirmation for one week, which is three and three weeks, and the middle of the week, three and a half week. So we have one week co compared to seven, seven years. So one week, one year, one, one two weeks, three, three, uh, th two years, like that. So he said, in the middle of the week, that is half of the week, one year. So it's going to be like, let's look at it like January, February, March, April. So it's going to be like one week is one year. So in the middle of one of the week, that is in the month of June. So three and a half years is going to stop. And that's when the Antichrist, the, the two witnesses will have finished their work and have been taken. So the next three and a half years will be a great tribulation. A great tribulation. That's why the Bible says, run. It is after the three and a half years is over, that Jesus Christ is going to return with the saints, with all of us by God's grace, with the body of Christ, to fight the battle of Armageddon. But what, proud to that, so we need to understand that in conclusion, we're going to conclude, this is part one. In conclusion, you know the topic is what is the connection between Israel, connection of Jerusalem and the Antichrist. The connection is this, Jerusalem is going to be the center of the evidence of the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to the Jews. So we need to understand right now that the rapture is going to take place before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Yeah? And then we need to understand that Jerusalem will be the centerpiece of where the Antichrist is going to come from. The, the, the Antichrist is not a Jew. He's going to come from the Roman. We're going to find out where he's going to come from. But he's going to come from the Roman side. Now, the Antichrist knows that for him to... Remember that the enemy is looking after the seed. He's after the seed. By God's grace, the Lord will teach us about what I went after the woman and the seed. So he's after the seed. He's still after the seed till tomorrow. But the Lord Almighty is greater than him. He's confused. He's a confused spirit. Because the Lord confused him. He was thinking the, the seed was a natural seed. He didn't know that the, the seed was a spiritual seed. Our Lord Jesus Christ. So by God's grace, we've, the Holy Spirit has, has taught us right now that Jerusalem is one of the things the Antichrist, the enemy will move the Antichrist to go to create peace 
for for three and a half years, it's going to rain for seven years. It's going to create peace for three and a half years. Make all the nations come together. Make them to um, align and say, okay, Israel, you can rebuild the temple because the temple is the temple is actually a mosque right now. So it's going to be leveled down. They will allow the Israelites to rebuild the temple again. All the things that they need to rebuild the temple is available in Jerusalem today. Now. They have everything. So once that happens, Joshua will be so happy. They disperse all the military operations. Everybody go home, become civilians, enjoy yourself for three and a half years. The two witnesses will come on ground. Tell people, tell them that the God, you will, they will preach the gospel. They will not listen to them. After the three and a half years, the two witnesses will leave. And then suddenly, the Antichrist will change and say that he will not begin to do certain things he's not meant to do in the temple. Jesus Christ now said wrong because a terrible thing is about to happen. If not because of the 140,000, 144,000 that were sealed for that purpose because the 144,000 were the ones that believed the two witnesses. Those are the ones that will become the evangelists at that period. But I'm not going to be around by God's grace at that time. By God's grace, we shall all be rapturable in the name of Jesus. So by God's grace, it's going to be a season. We're going to go to part two. And the Lord Almighty will help us to find out where is this Antichrist coming from? And what are the things that will happen in the last three and a half years? And I know that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So if you know you are not yet a child of God, please, it's better you are not left behind. Don't be left behind. <laughs> For people that will be left behind, what they will face, it's not good. Just become a child of God now. If you've never given your life to Jesus, say these prayers after me. The Lord today, the grace is sufficient for us. The grace is available. The gift of grace is available for us. The Lord is knocking at the door. All you need to do is open the door for him. Say these prayers after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I renounce you, Satan, and your works in Jesus' name. Pray this last prayer point and say, Lord, anything that will make me miss heaven, Please take it away from me. Anything that will make me miss the rapture, please take it away from me. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you know you said that prayers, I will pray with you. Father Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. Thank Mommy, you Lord for the, your The prayers, you didn't say the prayers. They ended by that time. Please say these prayers after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. I renounce you, Satan, and your works. The grace to finish the race well. Let it rest upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your children that have given their life to you. Father, your word says, by no means will you cast out anyone that comes to you. The sustaining grace will finish the race well. Let it rest on each one of us. And the grace will finish the race well. Father, please, let it rest upon us in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that will make us to miss heaven, Father, please take it away from us. By fire, by force, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. So my brother, my sisters and the Lord, by God's grace, we're going to be back again. This is a teaching that you do not rush. And I know that the Lord Almighty will help us. We will finish the race well in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'll see you very soon. The Lord be with you. Shine his face upon you. Protect you. In Jesus' name. God bless you.